Christmas. Welcome to Christmas Eve worship um, with United Presbyterian Church. I'm greeting you this evening from my home and I know I'm finding you in your homes as well. Um, in this year of firsts, this is our first ever all digital, digital um, Christmas Eve service, so we're very excited about this um, and glad to welcome you. Please drop your um, name in the chat. Um, add some comments, greet one another, um, ask questions, um, and enjoy um, this celebration of the birth of our Savior. We're very glad that you're here. Let's enter into worship.
When the world was dark and the city was quiet, you came. You crept in beside us and no one knew. Only the few who dared to believe that God might do something different. Will you do the same this Christmas, Lord? Will you come into the darkness of our world? Not the friendly darkness, as when sleep rescues us from tiredness, but the fearful darkness in which people have stopped believing that war will end, or that food will come, or that a government will change, or that the church cares. Will you come into that darkness and do something different to save your people from death and despair? Will you come into the quietness of the city town, not the friendly quietness as when lovers hold hands, but the fearful silence when the phone has not rung, the letter has not come, the friendly voice no longer speaks, the doctor's face says it all. Will you come into that darkness and do something different, not to distract, but to embrace your people? And will you come into the dark corners and the quiet places of our lives. We ask this not because we are guilt-ridden or want to be, but because the fullness of our lives long for depends on us being as open and vulnerable to you as you were to us when you came, wearing no more than diapers and trusting human hands to hold their makeup. Will you come into our lives if we open them to you and do something different? When the world was dark and the city was quiet, you came, you crept in beside us. Do the same this Christmas, Lord. Do the same this Christmas. Amen.
We light one candle for hope because the world is broken and the wait is long, but hope just doesn't let go. Hope holds space for all of our longings, lingers on the edge of harsh reality like the dawn gently awakening the sky. Keep awake, she whispers, for the world is being made new. So we light one candle because it only takes one Christ with us. comes from Luke chapter 1 verses 5 through 19. In the time of Herod king of Judea there was a priest named Zechariah who belonged to the priestly division of Abijah. His wife Elizabeth was also a descendant of Aaron. Both of them were righteous in the sight of God observing all the Lord's commands and decrees blamelessly. But they were childless because Elizabeth was not able to conceive, and they were both very old. Once when Zechariah's division was on duty, and he was serving as priest, before God he was chosen by lot, according to the custom of the priesthood, to go into the temple of the Lord and burn incense. And when the time for the burning of the incense came, all the assembled worshipers were praying outside. Then an angel of the Lord appeared to him, standing at the right side of the altar of incense. When Zechariah saw him, he was startled and was gripped with fear. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah. Your prayer has been heard. Your wife, Elizabeth, will bear you a son, and you are to call him John. He will be a joy and delight to you, and many will rejoice because of his birth. For he will be great in the sight of the Lord. He is never to take wine or other fermented drink, and he will be filled with the Holy Spirit even before he is born. He will bring back many of the people of Israel to the Lord their God, and he will go on before the Lord in the spirit of 
and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the parents to their children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous, to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Zechariah asked the angel, how can I be sure of this? I am an old man and my wife is well along in years. The angel said to him, I am Gabriel, I stand in the presence of God, and I have been sent to speak to you and to tell you this good news. We light one candle for peace because the world is broken and the wait is long, but we refuse to be frozen by fear. Peace comes in fits and starts, a deep breath, a courageous truth, a humble heart. Prepare the way, she whispers, for the Lord comes to make the broken whole. So we light one candle because it only takes one. Christ with us. A reading from the Gospel of Matthew, the first chapter, beginning with the 18th verse. Now the birth of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, 
for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke from his sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took her as his wife. I don't think I'll ever understand what has happened to me these past months. When Mary told me about expecting a baby and about the Holy Spirit, I didn't know what to think and wanted to walk away altogether. Then an angel came to me in a dream and assured me that Mary had told me the truth. The son she would have would be named Jesus, and he would save his people. So we were married and waited for the birth, and the light of peace began to flicker in my heart. Light one candle for joy, because the world is broken and the wait is long, but our joy cannot be contained. Like a toddler, toppling the thrones of power with a gleeful swipe, joy pierces our silence with song, interrupts our sighing with laughter, unshackles our fumbling feet to dance. My soul magnifies the Lord, she whispers. And my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. So we light one candle, because it only takes one. Christ with us. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting they might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of Most High. The Lord will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I'm a virgin? The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. 
Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age, and she who, is, who was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month, for no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. I'm still amazed at Gabriel's greeting. He called me God's favorite, even though I was an ordinary girl, even though I lived in the humble town of Nazareth. What could I say except, I am God's servant? Hardly anyone believed the angel's message that my son was God's son. The angel's shining light got dimmer and nearly went out because everyone judged me by what they saw a girl who was going to have a baby before she was married. Becoming the mother of Jesus has given me so much to think about. This is changing my life. The light of God's joy is growing inside me. We light one candle for love because the world is broken and the wait is long, but love never ends. Love faithfully goes about the work of casting out fear, speaking truth, healing the deepest wounds, crossing the divide from this world to the next and back again. Here I am, she whispers, the servant of the Lord. So we light one candle because it only takes one, Christ with us. A reading from Luke chapter 2, verse 1 through 7. In those days a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. Ever near, come as friend to every stranger, come as hope for every fear. As you live to heal the broken, by the outcast, free the bound. As you taught us love unknowing, teach us now where you are found. again we tell the story how your love for us was shown when the image of your glory wore an image like our own come and lighten with your wisdom come and fill us with your grace may the fire of your compassion kindle every land and race
holy child in the manger lead us ever in your way so we see in every stranger how you come to us today to our lives and to our living give us strength to live as you that our hearts might be forgiving and our spirits straight and true Big with the wonder of it, she held the gentle arm she had learned to lean on since the night of his dream, and both walked to the dark space they were given. We've heard the tale told and retold. We've spread nostalgic comfort over the scene with music, foreign tongues, the bleeding of a young lamb. But there was pain and a fear that all may go awry, that here on a cold, careless night, amid the muck of straw, something might be lost and the promise defiled. So when through her tears, she heard his helpless cry, she reached to hold him close, wiped away the grime. And looked into her child's eyes, a child's eyes, then nursed him and began their plans on how to teach their son who had already known eternity, snuggling now happily on her welcoming breast.
Luke chapter 2, verses 8 through 14. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. The scripture reading is from Luke, chapter 2, verses 15 through 20. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We were watching our flocks up in the hills. The night was mild and the sky was filled with bright stars. We were talking about the census and the crowd of strangers it had brought to town. Suddenly there was a blaze of light like nothing we've ever seen before. And they saw an angel standing in the middle of light. Do not be afraid. The angel spoke in a powerful voice. Don't be afraid. I am here with good news for you, which will bring great joy to the people. This very day in David's town, your Savior was born, Christ the Lord. There was more, things I didn't understand, about strips of cloth and a, and a baby in the manger. And there was no music, not the usual sound of a shepherd's flute, but the glorious music of a heavenly choir as a great army of heaven's angels sang praises to God. Glory to God in the highest heaven, and peace on earth to are those who are pleased for God. Glory to God, glory to God, and glory to God. Glory to God, glory to God. Angels we have heard on high, sweetly singing o'er the plain. And the mountains in reply, echoing their joyous strains. Come. 
come to Bethlehem and see him whose birth the angels sing. Come adore on bended knee, Christ the Lord, the newborn King. Gloria in excelsis Deo. and twinkling stars. We looked at one another and wonder. Had it all been just a dream? Or was this truly the night of salvation? Let's go to Bethlehem. I said it well. Matthew 2, 1 through 12. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw a star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed, and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem, in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel." Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child as soon as you find him. Report to me so that I too may go and worship him. 
After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it was stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. And coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. After having been warned in the dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. Let's take our gifts to the king. When the star appeared, we weren't sure what to do. We discussed what to do about it for a long time, but finally agreed that the appearance of this new star must mean that somewhere a king has been born. We decided to go find him. We set off in a caravan following the star. As we approached the village of Bethlehem, the star moved so that it stood over a simple house with a peasant family living inside. We planned our journey and selected the gifts that we could bring. One of us selected gold, always a good choice, and another frankincense, preferred by royalty. But I decided to bring myrrh. I could hardly believe my eyes. Was this the king that we had come so far to find? We bowed as though the child was a Roman emperor and offered our gifts. As they told us the story of his birth, of the angels and the shepherds, all they had seen and heard, we believed that this was no earthly king. Rather, we believed that in the body of this child, God had come to live among us. We light one candle for Christ, though the world is broken and the wait is long. Christ is with us in every heart and every home where hope, peace, joy, and love endure. Christ is with us. Glory to God in the highest heaven, she whispers, and peace to all on earth. So we light one candle because it only takes one. Christ is with us. Of all the people in this story that we've heard about this evening, I think I relate best to the shepherds. The shepherds were everyday working people. They weren't on anybody's A list. They were probably not on any kind of list. They were tasked with the everyday burden of laboring under the rules and regulations of the world around them. An oppressive kingdom which had at its core the principle that the powerful should always keep their power. That's why this story is so amazing. The shepherds were the people Jesus came to be with, the very people. They weren't rulers. They weren't holy priests. They were just regular people like you and me, working people, doing what shepherds do. And God appeared to them. 2,000 some years later, I'm struck by the thought that we're really not that different from those first visitors who came to see God's Son. We spend our lives working to make comfort and joy a reality for our families, trying to put enough food on our tables to keep a roof over our heads. All around us, we see folks struggling. We often feel anxious about what tomorrow will bring. But tonight... We gather with our joys, mingled together with our sorrows, our worries mixed up and tangled up with our hopes. And if we listen closely, we begin to hear the whisper of an angel choir in the far-off distance, singing glory. And we see a bit of the light that we so desperately need, the light that we want so very much to shine. And we're called to remember that it was the angel's song that actually challenged the shepherds to get moving. Come to Bethlehem and see. That invitation didn't come to the proud and the mighty of that world. That invitation wasn't reserved 
for the innkeepers or for the keepers of the empire. It came for regular folks like you and me. People who were then tasked with bringing the light out of the stable and into the lives of friends and neighbors and strangers. It's our responsibility now. It's our job to tell people that God has joined us, shepherds, minimum wage workers, middle managers, retirees, straight and queer, young and old, refugees and residents, God with us, Emmanuel, Jesus is with us here, right now. And like the shepherds of old, the light of hope begins to flicker in our hearts. God has come to be with us. God wants to be with us. It's hard to believe that the transformation of the world could begin in a stable or in Peoria. But the shepherds weren't just called to worship. They were called to join Mary in giving birth to God's revolution. Since Thanksgiving, maybe before, it feels like we've been rushing headlong towards something. We're searching for hope, for peace, for joy, for love. And tonight we've paused here with Mary and Joseph and the shepherds. And we found a temporary sanctuary in this moment. We've sung with angels. We've caught a glimpse of what joy can be. We've listened to the heart of a new mother wondering about her newborn. But most of all, we've seen how God came to be with us. We aren't alone. The song of the angels rings out in the night, and the light we need shines into our lives once again. And as the excitement in our hearts grows, we can add our voices to the song of those angelic messengers until the heavens can't contain the song, until hope bursts out and this hurting world begins to hear it and experience it, it too. God is with us. God is with us. And though the songs may fade, and they will, and the celebration will end, Tonight, we stand with Mary and Joseph in awe. We see this little child with ten fingers and toes, and we realize that this light is now our responsibility. As we share the light here in the sanctuary, we invite you to share the light at home. Light your candle and think about the light of Christ shining for your neighbors. Silent night, holy night, all is They have heard it on the hills. They have heard it in the streets. The rumor prevails, and none can contradict it. Some are looking for the prophets. 
Some are studying the skies. Others speculate or calculate, but none can deny the facts. Some are dancing back to sheepfolds. Some are traveling foreign roads. Some await more information. Others celebrate the news. In a foreign place, a ruler has imposed a new tax. In a hilly place, an old woman nourishes her new son. In a royal place, an old ruler senses a new threat. In a busy place, a young couple cope with their new child. In what seems like the wrong time. Three. In, In what, what seems, seems like, like the wrong place. Among those who seem like the wrong people. God has decided to bless us. And God has decided to disturb us. God has decided to be with us.